thanks you for it. We praise you for it. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now I want to do one more thing before we take off and we begin to sing and worship. I want us to invite God to come into our lives. Now I know that sounds maybe elementary for some of you today. But he don't go anywhere he's not welcomed. And guess what? I want him to be welcomed. I want him to have liberty. I want him to have freedom to touch us and to speak to us and to challenge us and to change us. Because when God is present, anything can happen. So why don't you welcome him right now with your hands raised one more time. God, we welcome you, God, into this house. God, we welcome you into our lives today, God. Oh, God, I welcome you, God, into my life, Lord. Oh, I welcome you, God, into this house of the Lord today. I want you, God, to God, be comfortable, God, and feel right, right at home, God. But this is a place where your presence dwells. This is the place, God, where your spirit moves, God. This is the house of the Lord today. We welcome you, God. We invite you, God, to have your way today, God, to have liberty in this house today, God. Oh, to move mightily today in the name of Jesus. God, let the redeemed of the Lord say so in this house in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.
can do anything in your situation. Every chain is broken. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every chain can be broken. Every chain is broken. Sing every chain. set free. You can live free. No more bondage. Praise God. Amen. In just a few minutes, I'm going to be preaching about God's extravagant grace. It's amazing. It's extravagant. It supersedes anything we could ever experience. And we've been touched by the grace of God. We've been changed by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Why don't you greet three or four before you go back to your seat and tell them, I am a recipient of grace. God's amazing grace. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Praise the Lord. We have a ministry here at First Apostolic Church called Truth Point. And if you would ever be interested in a Bible study, 
somebody would love to share the word of the Lord with you. We have Bible studies that range from one hour studies all the way to studies that could last 12 lessons. Brother and Sister Bowski head up our Truth Point ministry and uh, they would love to introduce you to a deeper appreciation for the word of God. We have a host of teachers around here at First Apostolic Church as well that would love uh, to, to lead a Bible study with you. And uh, so we offer that regularly. Amen. We want everybody that would have a desire to know the Bible better, to have that experience today. But one of our aspects of Truth Point is a three-minute Bible study, a three-minute expression of truth called a 180. And Sister Cadence Cox is coming at this time to give us a 180 Truth Point. God bless you. All right. So when I was praying about this, I felt to speak about honesty. So here we go. Honestly, honesty is the best policy. And if I'm being honest, I finished writing this at 9.40 p.m. last night. Although I was thinking it through for quite a while, I promise. Um, So what is honesty? According to Merriam-Webster, honesty is meaning uprightness of character or action. Honesty implies a refusal to lie, steal, or deceive in any way. So why do humans lie? Most of the time, it would be to avoid a punishment, avoiding embarrassment, or to protect yourself from harm. When practiced, lying can become a very easy thing. And when you lie, you must lie again to protect the first lie, and it becomes just a deep hole that you get trapped in. The University of Alabama claims that, on average, a person lies once or twice a day. Proverbs 12.22 says, Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. So if you're ever questioning whether or not it's a sin to lie, that verse in the Ninth Commandment can answer that for you. John 8.32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Sometimes being honest can be a very hard thing to do. It causes you to be vulnerable, maybe even uncomfortable. But sometimes we have to get outside of ourselves to get, and get uncomfortable to be set free from the bonds of lying, that lying holds on you. Even when, in the moment it seems hard, the feeling of relief after just being honest can be so fulfilling. Lying keeps trust from relationships, friendships, and whatever else around you. Lying does more than supposedly protect you. It kills everything good and valued in life, and it can keep you from being successful. So neuroimaging studies um, have shown that people's brains show considerably more activity when they're lying than when they're not, particularly in the prefrontal cortex, suggesting that lying requires extra cognitive control and inhibition of truth-telling. So why not give your brain a break and just be more honest? (laughs) It's better for us all anyways. In the Bible, we find accounts of people lying, such as Peter denying Jesus. He lied three times about knowing Christ, and although it may have saved his life in the moment, the Bible says that when Peter remembered Jesus telling him that he would deny him, Peter went out and wept bitterly. Peter was in a lot of emotional pain in that moment, probably very regretful. But now we have forgiveness of sin, and God can cleanse you of every lie you have ever told. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will heal their land. It will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If you repent and turn from the sin of lying, God can heal your heart and mind, and he can set you free from bondage and hurt. I think that's a pretty great deal, so let's all give our minds a break, be real, be honest, and live better. you for that timely message. Amen. One that we could all bear in mind. It's sometimes we, uh, we say things and uh, don't even think about what we're saying. Amen. Things coming up. We have a hyphen lunch today after service. And uh, Sister Cox, could you talk a little bit about the clothing? I can. We, we do have our uh, Mother's Memorial clothing closet that will be this Thursday night after church for Everybody that comes, you kind of have a a little, um, you got the early bird shopping time there. (laughs) 
and then Friday night from 6 to 10. But we do still need some donations. We're getting some, but we'd love some more. We've got this classroom. It's not the first, the first classroom, the toddler's class, but the next one over. You can put your stuff in there. We prefer hangers um, on the clothes in good condition. We also have shoes and, and purses and all of that. But if you um, cannot donate, you can still give an offering. We have till July 10th to give our Mother's Memorial offering, and I believe our goal is 1400 So hopefully through your giving, and and, our, and we're also having a bake sale. I need to add that um, from 6 to 10 during the clothing drive. So thank you, Brother Chris. Sounds great. Sounds great. Well, next Sunday is Father's Day, and we've got some really exciting things planned for next week. Um, in the first service, we're going to call it Men and Dads, Donuts and Fun. And uh, so all men and boys are welcome, even if you are not a dad. I'm not a dad, and they're letting me come too. <laughs> all young women and girls are welcome if your dad is here. And if there are any young girls in Sunday school, they can come too, even if your dad is not here. And then the 1045 service, we're going to be having Brother Dunaway and some other special things that uh, uh, Brother Dave is helping us put together. So. Let's pray for our offering. Lord Jesus, we love you today. We thank you, God, for giving all for us, God. Giving all. Lord, we want to give back to you so that your kingdom will be furthered in Jesus' name. Feel free to come and bring your offering.
I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Monday, I believe it was. And the early reports was that there was probably going to be tremendous damage. But he's here today. The Lord spared his life. Amen. 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 We serve a way maker and a miracle worker. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. It's good to see. Amen. Sister Cross here today. Amen. The Lord touched her body. Gave her a healing. So many testimonies of God's ability to keep us, to heal us, to protect us. Amen. And he's a promise keeper as well. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Sister Cox. Thank you, praise team. I invite you quickly, if you would, to turn with me to the the book of James, chapter number four. While we're turning there, we do want to acknowledge, amen, numerous uh, guests with us today. It's good to have... Uh, Megan with us. Megan, I believe it's Google. We thank God for her. Nancy Smith, Tony Frasinor, I believe. Jonathan Glazik is here. Jose and Sarah are here. Give all of them a big hand. God bless. <laughs> Amen. If you're here and we didn't get a card filled out on you, please forgive our oversight. We would love to to know that you are worshiping with us here today and to, to express our appreciation. Uh, for you being with us. God bless you. James chapter number four. James chapter number four. And we will look at one verse of scripture, that being verse number six. Where the Bible simply says this, but he giveth more what? Grace. Grace. He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he'll give grace to the humble. 
He'll give grace to the humble. God's extravagant grace is for the humble. And I want more and more of God's grace in my life. How about you? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the grace that you give. Extravagant grace. Amazing grace. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you today. Hallelujah for that. Glory to God in the highest. I don't even think they'll have to put the words up on the screen behind me, but I think everybody in this room would know this song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. again oh, amazing sing grace how sweet, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost praise God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for that amazing grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Simply, grace is defined as God's unmerited favor. God's unearned favor. Grace, the good pleasure of God to give heavenly benefits to the undeserving. Amazing grace, the song says, that saved a wretch like me. When I was lost, when I was blind, now I'm found and now I see. God's grace, grace that can pardon all of our sin. Grace that is greater than anything that any one of us could ever do or has ever done. Grace that reaches down further than any other hand could reach to raise us higher than any everything, any other thing could lift us up. We affirm the good grace of God today that has changed our life. We confess it. We testify of it. And we believe it. Grace from God must be something that you receive and believe. We are saved by grace through faith. That not of ourself, it is the gift of God. The gift of God's grace saves us when we believe and trust Him. When you and I are desiring to be saved, we know that we can't save ourselves, and so we ask for the grace of God. We repent of our sins. We confess that we have sinned because we know there's grace to forgive our sins. We today need to speak of this grace to one another. People need to know that God's grace can save in anybody. In fact, we need to affirm the grace of God in our families. We need our families to know that God's grace is for all. We need to affirm God's grace in our marriages. 
We need to recognize that there's no perfect husbands, no perfect wives. Maybe, maybe I just bust your bubble there. I'm sorry, but the problems in your marriage is not just your husband's or your wife's problems. It's, it's you as well. That's why we need God's grace. Amen. We need to affirm the grace of God to one another. We need to give grace to one another because we have received grace from, from God. Amen. Our churches need grace. Churches need to be a place where people can come that are seeking grace and maybe not finding it everywhere. There needs to be an appreciation, great appreciation for grace amongst you and I. You know, there's a a lot of uh, missing grace in our world today. People would just as soon cut one another off and end relationships and and just uh, destroy one another instead of build one another up. You see this quite often in in today's social interactions. There's a whole lot of snarky cutdowns, a whole lot of division, a whole lot of bullying instead of blessing. But when you and I speak affirmations of grace to one another, we do so because we recognize God's grace at work in another individual's life. None of us are perfect. We're striving to be more like Jesus, but none of us have reached there yet. Amen. But you and I that extend grace to one another, we do so because we recognize the value that is in the other. For all of us are made in the image and likeness of God. That God has, amen, created us not in accident, but He's made us to be someone that His Spirit could indwell. That He has desire to bring, amen, values into our lives through grace that we could never, ever attain ourselves. We have a Heavenly Father. A Heavenly Father that ministers affirmation to us. It's a powerful thing when a parent or a a, a teacher or somebody with great influence speaks in an affirming manner to another. We've all been cut down. We've all been, you know, we've we've been spoken roughly to by people that we loved, and it's 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 a hurtful thing. But when we we receive affirmation from parents or, or, or friends, when they build us up with their words. Amen. It's, it's an encouraging thing. And that's why the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is the greatest message on the face of the earth today because it is the affirmation that your life is valuable. It is the word of love from above that testifies that God cared enough for us that while we were yet sinners, he would die for us. That there's no greater love than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. John 3.16, we could all quote it, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. And it is the will of God for us as his people Not only to receive His grace, but to preach His grace, to teach His grace, to model His grace, to use grace as a training tool for our children. God expects this from us, and He provides plenty to us, preaching about God's extravagant grace. Thousands of scriptures in the Bible speak of God's grace towards you and I. Ephesians chapter number 2, verses 4 through 7 is one perfect example. And it says, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved. He's raised us together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding Riches of His grace. 
Grace, again, the unmerited favor of God. Grace, the good pleasure of God to bestow heavenly benefits upon the undeserving. Grace that saved a wretch like me. In the ages to come, through grace, he would be able to testify with this glorious riches of his kindness towards us. God is rich in mercy. God has great love for you and I. God has quickened us or made us come alive in Jesus Christ. It's the grace of God that's brought us salvation. It's the grace of God that has lifted us out of the pit of despair and sin. It is the grace of God that has caused us to actually be positioned in a heavenly manner, seated in heavenly places, the Bible says. When you think about the grace of God today, When you think about where you were when you first heard of the grace of God, when you think about the sins that you were bound in, when you think about the prison that you had created for yourself, amen, when you think of the lies that you were believing, when you think of the ways that the devil was hindering your every move, but then grace came. Then somewhere a light began to shine on a dark path. A truth began to triumph over the lie and you began to understand something that is hard even for, amen, faithful saints of God that have been in church all their lives to understand. And that is that grace cannot be bought, cannot be purchased, it cannot be earned. It must be received. It must be something that you say, I need what God can provide for me. We do serve a mighty God. We serve a God that is a very present help in in time of trouble. And it is an understanding of God's grace that can transform our lives. It's 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 an understanding of God's grace that can help us to pray better. When you know God is full of extravagant grace, you can come to God in faith and believe for what He's already said He's going to do. You can ask and expect to receive. You can seek and you can expect to find. You can knock and expect the door to be open. Why? Because God's grace says so. Amen. You can pour out your heart before God and tell him all of the things that you've done that you're disappointed in and all the dreams that have crashed and burned and all the trouble that you have allowed to come into your life. And you can expect while you're doing that to feel a distance. But the reality is, it is humility that attracts the grace of God. God resists the pride that is in our life. Our pride will fight against God every which way. Not desiring to humble ourselves. Not desiring to present our need before God, not recognizing that we are empty and only He can fill us. Amen. It is is a dangerous thing to live in pride. It's a dangerous thing to, to feel like I don't need anything from God. It's a dangerous thing to believe I can get everything in life by myself and that money will satisfy, relationships will satisfy, only to get money and get relationships and still be unsatisfied. Amen. It is the grace of God that is the deepest hunger of our life. Sometimes whenever we are praying, we're praying without a real understanding of grace. We'll pray things like this, God, please be with me. But grace has already told us I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We'll say, God, please remember my need as if God can forget. He can't forget. My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. We'll say, God, I'm weak. I need you to be strong on my behalf. And God says, I am strong on your behalf. I give you strength as well. Sometimes we think we're making a pest of ourselves. We think that God is tired of us coming again before his throne with our petitions. And we we believe that we're bothering God, but yet God doesn't get tired of you. God hasn't grown tired of you. 
Isaiah 40, 28 says, Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. Amen. He's not growing tired of you. Amen. Because he has extravagant grace. You and I grow impatient with the failings of one another. We grow impatient whenever people don't change quick enough for us. We grow impatient with people making the same mistakes over and over again because we are limited in the amount of grace that we'll give to one another. But God, the everlasting God, has amazing grace. I'm thankful for that. How about you? Sometimes we come to God and we say, I, I'm bringing a big need to you, God. I, 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 this, is, this is impossible. And God reminds us in his grace that there's nothing impossible for him. Jeremiah saw the grace of God and he said, Oh, Lord God, behold, you made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm, and there's nothing too hard for thee. Aren't you glad to know there's nothing too hard for the grace of God? There's no heart too hard for the grace of God. The grace of God continually stretches forth in hand and reaches towards us. It softens the hearted heart. Amen. It, it causes us, amen, to, 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 to eventually, eventually surrender to it. Grace. To surrender to grace. To yield to grace. To humble ourselves before God's grace. Sometimes we say, God, I need assurance that you're helping me. I, I, I don't know if you're near, but we don't realize that grace can't break a promise. Psalms 89, 34, my covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. God keeps his covenant. God keeps his promise. God keeps his word. God's grace is going to be there. God, I know I've repented of this time and time again. I, I, I'm coming to you one more time about this same issue in my life. But we forget the grace, Isaiah 43, 25. God says, I, even I, I am he that blotted out your transgression for my own sake. I will not remember your sins. I will not remember your sins anymore. Amen. Do you view God up there as one that's got a great tally of every mistake you have ever made? Well, friend, if you repent of your sins, God erases those. God removes those. The Bible says he'll cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. As far as the east is from the west, our sins are removed from us. Because he's a God of grace. He's a God, amen, of extravagant grace. God, will you go from with me as I go from here to there? Well, yes, because grace reminds us he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Deuteronomy 31 and 6. These understandings of the grace of God help us, amen, to pray and to draw closer, closer to God. Amen. As we contemplate the grace of God, it's amazing to realize our text today of James chapter number 4 and verse number 6, but he giveth more grace. He giveth more grace. There's always going to be more grace. Today I'm preaching to all of us here that there is a grace that is greater than all of our sins. There is a grace that is greater than the mistakes that we have made. There is a grace that doesn't count us out when we have counted ourselves out. There's a grace of God that, that can transform, amen, even our own sense of value and it can begin to make us believe good things about who we are and who God made us to be. There is a, there's a grace of God that has, that has brought an understanding to us like light that shatters the darkness. A grace of God that brings truth to us, that shatters the lie. A grace of God that brings hope to us, 
that causes us to be lifted up out of despair. A grace of God that can save you. A grace of God that can keep you. A grace of God, amen, that can unlock any prison door. I'm preaching about a God that gives more grace. A God that gives more grace to those that are humble. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, the Bible says. It is an attitude of humility that understands I can do nothing for myself. I must come to God. I must present myself unto the Lord, my need before God. I must bow myself before God. I must present an attitude that says, I have nothing, but you can give me everything. You can fill me full and completely. Grace, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Oh, hallelujah. The writer of that great song was a slave trader. He had spent his life making money bringing slaves from Africa over to Britain. And he began to feel convicted about that in his life. He began to realize that there was something horribly wrong about that kind of livelihood. That the whole system was not pleasing to God. That it all needed to come crashing down. And the Bible, uh, the, 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 the books that give us the history record of this song, Amazing Grace, testifies of that time when that slave trader heard the preaching of the good gospel of Jesus Christ. And he responded to the Lord saying, I don't know if I can be forgiven for what I've done. And thankfully, he was forgiven. He left that livelihood behind, spoke out against it so strongly that it was just a matter of a few decades before Britain outlawed slavery. And then it was outlawed in these United States a little while later. All because of grace. Grace got a hold of an individual's life that knew he was messed up, that knew he was, that, that, he, that he was doing the wrong things, but grace gave him a different course. A new chapter started in his life. And we're still singing the song today. We're still appreciating the value of it today. It was grace that caused uh, my, my heart to fear. And then grace, my fears, relieved. How precious did that grace appear when I first believed. God's extravagant grace. He giveth. He giveth it. He giveth it. He offers it. He offers it. All you have to do is receive it. All you have to do is humble yourself and receive it. And say unto the Lord, I I can't live without it. Oh, praise God. I've shared this illustration before and I close with it because we've got a glorious baptism here in just a few minutes. Bryson's desiring to be baptized and there's a host of witnesses and family to witness this today. But I heard a story that helps me understand how the grace of God can wear out, amen, the sin in our life. And There was a new dog in town. There was a new bulldog. He would go down the alleyways and crawl under the fence where there lived two Labrador retrievers. He would go into their yard and begin to eat their food, and these Labrador retrievers would come and they would begin to fight with this bulldog until they ran the bulldog out of the yard. That happened day after day after day for for many, many days, and then a week went by and two weeks went by. But after a while, the fight in those Labradors began to wane. That bulldog just kept coming with that tenacity, crawling under the fence, eating their food, till eventually those Labradors just laid down and let him eat. The bulldog had his way. He had worn them out. I could say today that grace is kind of like a bulldog. Grace is tenacious. Grace will continue to reach for you. 
and reach for you and reach for you. And the sinners, a lot of times we will run from it. We'll turn a deaf ear towards it. We'll stay in our sinfulness. But then the next day, grace comes back. And then the next day, grace comes back. And the next day, grace comes back. And after a while, we realize that our resistance is beginning to wane. Maybe, maybe you're here today and you're realizing, you know what? I'm just, I'm tired of resisting grace. I'm tired of fighting God. I'm tired of, I'm tired of turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to Him. I'm tired. I'm ready to receive what He wants. If you'll humble yourself today under His mighty hand, He'll raise you up. If you'll let His grace into your life today. If you will surrender to grace, if you will just say, okay, I can't beat it. I'm not stronger than it. It's going to keep coming back. God's grace is going to come tomorrow and it's going to come the next day and the next day and the next day. And it wears us down. The goodness of God leads us to repentance, the Bible says. God's been good to you and God wants to be even better in your life. It's the goodness of God. The goodness of God, the grace of God, the mercies of God, which are new every morning, the faithfulness of God, which is greater than anything we could ever understand. Oh, friend, I'm so glad to preach today about God's extravagant grace. I'm so glad to tell anybody here under the sound of my voice that there is a grace that is greater than all of your sin. I'm so glad to tell you that there's an open door before you if you want to get out. And find your way in, the door is still open. The grace of God is still beckoning. The whispers of God that you hear day and night, come home, come home, come home, come home, come home, come home. Ye that are weary, come home, come home, come home, come home. Stop running from God's grace. You're not going to be able to outrun it. So we stand together in His presence. You're not going to be able to outrun it. You need it. You need the grace of God. Whether you've been saved all your life or not, you need the grace of God. You need the grace of God. You need the help from above. You need the affirmation of God's love. You need to know today because the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You need to know the truth today. The truth will make you free. And the truth is that God's grace is extravagant. God's grace is amazing. God's grace will reach far down and lift you up today. Amen. Don't be discouraged any longer. Don't don't, don't believe the lie any further. Believe the truth today about God's amazing grace. These altars are open for anybody that would like to just come and thank God for the grace that he has given in your life and to receive more of it but you got to come in humility don't come in your pride don't come in your arrogance don't come and say i don't need it if you don't think you need more grace like our text says then just you can ignore this invitation but if you think i need more grace i need more of the grace of god I need more of that free offering of the Lord. I need more of that blessing in my life. I need more of that favor of God in my life. I don't know what I'm going to deal with today. I don't know what I'm going to deal with tomorrow. But I need, I know with grace I can overcome everything. With the favor of God I can overcome everything. With the blessing of the Lord I can face any giant that comes in my way. Oh, the grace of God. Hallelujah. Wonderful is that grace of God. Thank you for the grace of God today. Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Let your grace restore me. Let your grace cause my life to be placed on the right path. Let your grace, amazing grace. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't you just reach out to God today? Reach out to God today. Say, I need your grace, God. Show me your grace, God, in a fresh way. I want to receive your grace today, Lord. I want to begin a relationship with grace today. I want to begin a fresh 
your relationship with God through His grace today. I don't want to run from you anymore, God. I want to, I want to run to you. You've been drawing me. 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 And praise you. Oh, it's your goodness that's led me to repentance. It's your goodness. Your grace. of God that releases the virtues of God into our life he's a merciful God and he can heal he can restore he can bless he can do anything hallelujah he's an extravagant God of grace that we look to in times of need and in every situation we can find him hallelujah so if you want to come forward today let our ministering leaders anoint you and pray today, God. God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's grace is sufficient today. God's mercy. is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient today. God's grace is sufficient today. Hallelujah. I can receive anything if I'm humble today.
the Lord, everybody. We're going to invite any of the members of the Glasic and Lowball family that would like to come forward, any friends that are with them. They can make their way up close to the window here. Give them a big hand, a great group of family members here to witness Bryson's baptism. Amen. Come on down, Bryson. Careful there. Bryson's 10 years of age. He's been coming to Sunday school around here for a long time now. And uh, we've just seen a growth of faith in him. And uh, last, uh, last Sunday after the preaching of, uh, of our special guest, amen, Brother Pace, made an invitation call for anyone that would like to be baptized. And Bryson raised his hand. He said, I'd like to be baptized. And uh, so we said, well, we would like to wait till your family and everyone could be here. And uh, what a great group of witnesses that are here. Bryson hasn't received the baptism of the Holy Ghost yet, but I told him he could receive it today in the waters. Amen. Amen. It's good to have Stephanie here. God bless her. She was reminding me that I baptized her many years ago. And uh, so I'm feeling kind of old now. But uh, thank the Lord for, for them. And then Elder Lowballs are here. Hallelujah. One generation observing the next generation get introduced to the family of God. Hallelujah. Isn't that a wonderful thing? It's a wonderful thing to see generations serving God together. Whether they're 10 years of age or however they may be. Hallelujah. It is the will of God. Will of God for our families. Amen. To all rejoice in this together. Sister Renee, would you pray a blessing today over Bryson and then we will baptize him. Thank you, Jesus, for this day and for this moment, God. Thank you, God, that you allowed Bryson to be in my life, Jesus, and that I get to witness this today, Lord. We pray that your blessings be upon him continuously, Lord God. Let his understanding of you just grow and grow every day, Lord God. Let him, God, know you as a friend and a God, Lord Jesus, God. Help him to do what's right in his life, God. Protect him, Lord, from this evil world, God. Protect his mind and his life and help him to make good decisions, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bryson Glasic Lowball, based upon your confession of faith, your repentance in an altar, asking the Lord to forgive you of your sins, based upon your desire today to know God in a greater way, I'm honored to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, expecting you to soon receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
for Bryson getting baptized today. And there's others. Amen. There's others. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, we're just believing the Lord to pour out his spirit in Bryson's life. Amen. And greater things are yet ahead for him. Be praying for him and all these young people that are getting baptized. That the Lord would just guide them, direct them. Amen. Fill them with his precious Holy Ghost. Somebody asked me one time, Brother Cox, how do you how do you gauge a good service? I said, anytime we have somebody baptized or filled with the Holy Ghost, it's the best service ever. Amen. Thank God. That's what we do. That's what we believe. That's what we look for. That's what we pray and fast about. Let God fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. Let somebody see their need to be water baptized in Jesus' name. Let somebody repent of their sins in an altar and find that that freedom. Glory to God. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for that today. Brother Alex, why don't you come and dismiss us if you would today. There is a hyphen lunch right afterwards uh, for all of our hyphen age. God bless them. What a great group. Amen. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done in this place today, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would just continue, Lord God, to follow after you, God, in every aspect of our life today, God. Lord, and that we will take, Lord God, everything that we continue to learn here today, Jesus, and just apply it to our life today, God. And I pray today, God, that we just move forward in Jesus' name. Amen.